In this video, let's go through step-by-step step how to make this interactive carousel component within Figma. Let's work through in Figma how to create this interactive carousel component. We're gonna build it in two stages. We'll first build the interactive card component that's gonna go within the carousel. And then after that, we'll build the carousel and I'll show you how to build out the component so it's interactive. So let's start off with the card. Let's start by opening Unsplash and we'll bring in three images that we're gonna use in our carousel. Now let's leave two of these images off to the side. We'll use them later. And let's start just with this image to make our card component. Click Shift A on your keyboard to apply auto layout to it. And we'll name this our image wrapper and remove all the padding and the spacing on it. Now this is very large. Let's bring this down a little bit. Let's select our image and turn on lock aspect ratio first. And now let's select our image wrapper, hold Shift and drag it down. And now I have a grid on my frame here. If you want to use the same grid that I have, it's a very basic one, but this is what it is. It's 12 columns, the margin is 64, and the gutter is 24. And I know with my carousel, I want to have a few on the screen that are visible. So I'm kind of just working out the side of that now. So if I have each of them take up four columns, which works out for them to be 421, just as a representation, you can put them across like this. And that will work for my carousel. So now that I've worked out the size, let's just change the height of this from fix to hug as well, as it was a little funny bit down the bottom. Let's style it, image wrapper, let's round the corners a little bit, and select clip content, and then select our image wrapper and align it to center. Now click T on your keyboard and we'll type in for our heading, for our card, let's bump this up to 26 or 28. And now let's click T again and type out a description. Let's move this text down to about 16. And let's open the plugins and type in Lorem and we'll use Lorem Ipsum to write out one sentence to go in our card. Now let's drag this along. Let's actually make this a bit longer. Let's make this two sentences. Now with our heading and our description, select both of them, click Shift A, and let's reduce the gap between them to 16. And now let's open the plugins again, and let's search for Lucid. I like to use this Lucid icon set and search for arrow, and let's drop in our arrow right. Now with our arrow selected, let's select our text and our arrow, and apply Shift A to apply auto layout. Let's make the gap about 40. And now last thing, let's select all of our items here. Hold Shift to select multiple things, and select our image wrapper, and click Shift A. So now it's all in one auto layout frame. Let's reduce the size here to about 16 as well. And now let's just tidy it up a little bit and also make sure everything is named to keep it clean. Let's reduce this to about 12. And we'll name this card component. We have image wrapper. We'll name this one content wrapper. And our inner one here can be inner content wrapper. And the less can just be the same. I find it really helpful to have our layer set up when building a design system, and then it's easier to refer back and know how to change things. So this is the most basic of our card. So let's make it a component and make it interactive. And then we'll build out the carousel with these cards. Come up to the top right, click create component. Let's add a variant. Let's name this variant state. We'll name the first one default. And then let's click the plus here to add a second one. Let's drag this up so we can see it. And we'll make this second one hover. And with the hover state, let's select our heading here and add an underline to it. So you can click command U and that'll add an underline. And now the second thing I want to do so that people know it's hovered is I want to make the image actually 
a bit larger so you can tell it looks like the image is zooming in a little bit. So if we select our image here and we go to make it larger, there's going to be one problem that we're going to have to fix first. So if we go to try to make it larger, the whole card is actually going to go down and it's not, doesn't, it doesn't look like it's cropping in, it's just getting larger. So let's undo that and to fix that, select your image wrapper from your default version, hold shift and select your image wrapper as well from your hovered version. So they're both selected now. And let's change this to fixed height and clip content. And now we can select our image from our hovered state, K to scale, and let's make it 1.3 size scale. Now select your first default variant, come to the top right here and click prototype. And let's drag a prototype noodle from default to hover, select it while hovering, Animation type is Smart Animate. Let's make it 350, ease out. So if we just preview that quickly, here's our basic card interaction that we hover and the image crops in and we get our underline on our text. So that's the first bit. Let's just move this all to the side. And now let's start building out how do we make this interactive carousel. So let's drag a default version of our card in as you can see, it lines up to our grids that we set up before. And now let's make a couple copies. Right click, copy, and right click on your frame and click paste here and paste here again. And now let's align these. Let's make the gap between them 24. Because I know that my gap here is 24. We're gonna change those images now so you can tell which card it is as they're moving. So let's move our images back in that we selected right at the start. Select the image, click in this little area here and click Command C on your keyboard and then click into your image wrapper and select the image that's in your component. Click this little area as well, just below the fill area and click Command V and they'll add the image in here and then you can delete the other one. And we'll do the same process again Click in this fill with the image selected, click Command C and click into our image here and click this little area and click Command V and that will replace the image and we'll delete this bottom version. Now let's set up our carousel and let's set up our controls for it as well. So let's add a heading up here, this can be our carousel heading. Let's make this a bit larger. Bring it down a little bit. And now let's make our controls over to the side. So we need to make controls so the user can navigate our carousel. So we're actually going to draw rectangles. So click R on your keyboard. Let's draw out a rectangle. Let's make it about 28 pixels wide and 28 pixels high. And then we're actually going to round the corners all the way on the rectangle. So let's add in 999. This will be clear in a second why I'm doing this. Let's make a copy, hold option and drag to make a copy, hold option again and drag to make another copy. And now with this three of them selected, click shift A to apply auto layout. Now we need to make one the active state so you can tell which item is getting focused in the carousel. The reason we made them squares is that we can drag it and get this kind of long circle effect. But it doesn't become an oval. So that's why you use a rectangle instead. So let's change the color on this so it looks like a bit more of an active state. And leave the other two as the gray state. So align this with the end. And now let's click our carousel heading. Hold shift, click our controls and click shift A to apply auto layout. And let's align this to the text baseline. Now let's select our three cards here. Click Shift A to apply auto layout. And now we're almost there. So now let's name it. We have our cards wrapper. We have our carousel heading wrapper. And now the last stage here is to get the sliding effect is we don't actually want to apply auto layout. We want to draw a frame around all these items. So let's click F on a keyboard and let's draw a frame. Can 
Command Y to make sure that it's all lined up. Command Y, and let's bring up this bottom so it's all lined up. And now we want to make sure that clip content is actually off for this. The reason we don't want this in an auto layout frame is so that we still have the ability to move our items here around so they can slide more easily. If it's in an auto layout frame, we're going to get locked within having to align it left, middle or right. Now we have the basis of our carousel set up. So let's name this carousel component. Let's make our frame a bit bigger. And now let's make this a component. I'll show you how to make it interactive. Come to the top right and click create component. Let's add a state. We'll name this one first. Let's add a variant. And we all we want to do here is that as the user clicks the item, we want this carousel to scroll across. So let's click into our card wrapper and let's turn shift G on to turn on our grids and let's drag it across. And we know that we want it to line up with the grid of the outside grid here. So it's aligned. So that's the same place and it will replace the other one. Let's just turn clip content off on this component here so you can kind of see what's happening. You can see that it's going off the screen. And now let's update our control here so the user knows which carousel item they're on. So they're not on the first one anymore, they're on the second one. So we need to make sure that this rectangle, the properties of this, is now with this second item. So we know we need to make it 84 pixels long and we need to have this color code. So let's say, select our second item. Let's copy and paste the color code into it. Let's make it 84 pixels wide. And then we need to make this one the static one. So we know this is 28 by 28. So let's copy the code here, Command C, and let's paste it into here and change the width to 28. Now let's make a third one and repeat this process again. So first off, select our card wrapper, click shift G to turn the new grid on. You don't have to turn the grid on, it just makes it easier to make it pixel perfect. As I know, I have to drag this all the way across here so that it's in line with the last column. And now let's do the same thing with our control component over here. We wanna make the third one look like the second one now. Copy the color code, paste it into the third one we want to make this one 84 wide and we want to make the second one look like the default state. Copy the gray, make it 28. Let's make it gray. And now we have our state set up. Now we just got to prototype it. So come up to the top right and click prototype. And now we want to select the second one will take us to the second version. So the se second circle is here. We can skip this one because this one is already on the second one. And then we'll need to select this one down here. It's actually showing you the similar ones. So you can see that little purple outline that's going around it. So we don't need this one right now. So hold shift down. If you hold shift down, it allows you to select multiple components at the same time. So we have this one selected, we're holding shift. We wanna select this one. And now as we go to drag our prototype noodle, you'll see it comes off the first one and the second one as well. So we want to drag this down to the middle component here. And whatever we set our interaction, it will be the same for both of these noodles right now. So on click, we want to change to the second state. I want this to take 500 milliseconds. Let's just go through and make sure we name everything so it's easier to work it out. Second, third. And now repeat the process. So now we want to select how to change it to the third state. So select our third gray circle here, hold shift and select it here as well. And we're going to skip this one because this one's the active one. And now it's the same process. Drag our noodle and change it to our third state. On click, change to third smart animate 550. And now let's close up the loop by making it so you can change back to the first state. 
So we skip this one because this is the active one. So we'll select our circle here. Hold shift, select our circle here. Pull our prototype noodle up to our first state. On click, change to smart animate 500. Now that's all connected up. So let's see how that looks. So select a version here, hold option or right click and click copy. You don't want to drag the original one out. You just want to make a copy of it. Paste here. Let's just set up a quick frame to put it in. Let's apply our grid onto it. Now let's align our carousel component onto it. Select it and come to the top right here and click present. And there it is. That's how you can set up this very simple carousel component. So you have your controls here that if the user wants to click, they can slide along and it works whichever way you click it. And it also has the hover interaction as well. So if you want to prototype this with users, you can add more cards to it and you can make it a much larger carousel as well. But this is a really simple way that you can set up a carousel component that feels really interactive.